Welcome to an Alaska homestead where we're becoming more self-sufficient on a remote island in Southeast Alaska. So I went out with Steve and Mandy. Uh, they had three more properties they were listing. So we were going to go take a look at these properties and then we were going to do some halibut fishing. Steve, what do we got here? What you have here is called a generational bear trail where they use the same path over and over through generation. They step in the same footprint. We see these a few times throughout Southeast Alaska and it's going to be brown bear traversing through here. I mean, look at the size. I mean, for comparison, that's my foot right there. So that's so not Bigfoot? Yeah. That's not Bigfoot, that's generational brown bear. That's a, that's a pretty good size stride. Maybe too short for a Bigfoot, but not for a brown bear. I've seen this twice before milling around the woods. The first time she and I saw it, and it made the hair on the back of my neck raise up a little bit. But yeah, same footprints every time. Here, what is this? That looks like moose poop. I think that's moose. I think that's, that's a moose too big for deer. Right <laughs> but for our little sick of deer, that's yeah. way too big. That's definitely moose. This is a generational bear track. They head up the fresh water stream here. But one way, one way to tell if it's fresh is if it sticks to your teeth. That's how to tell if bear scat's fresh. Well, let us know if it's fresh. Well, it's not warm, so I'm, I'm gonna take it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the blueberries aren't out too much right now, so if there's no blueberries in it, it ain't fresh. Say what? Is there something on me? Uh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm like a golden I'm doodle. I'm our friend. <laughs> Well, after we checked out the property, we decided to uh, get back on Steve's boat and go do a little halibut fishing. I was just 
daydreaming out here. I know you are. I was trying to catch you before you come. Well, I actually caught a, a larger halibut that day. You know, not huge, but good enough to keep. So I brought that home with us. And then we decided to pull anchor and, and make our way back to the island. Well, I'm so strong. I'm pulling this thing. Not too much wiggle room today. I heard Captain Fump trimming his motors up. Must be getting a little more shallow. We're still in that dry spell and um, Ron and Pam were nice enough to offer us access to their little creek here. So we're going to take advantage of it. We're supposed to start getting rain next week and hopefully a lot of it. So cross your fingers for us. Anyways, we're going to start pumping some water and go water the garden. Got a big eagle setting on my boat. We're going to harvest some stuff in the garden, so I'm going to let my wife uh, show you what we got going on and tell you a little bit about our summer. As you can see, man, we've got reports of it being just pouring cats and dogs in Juneau for the last couple days. And all we've got is just a little sprinkle here and a little sprinkle there, and that's it. So not a torrential downpour, but uh, at this point, we'll take anything we can get. So this is our amazing outcome of what happens if it sun shines and you know the raven that dog has lost its mind <laughs> i know she's stepping all over my stuff she, she as a matter of fact she just stepped in my freshly um seeded spinach so i'm gonna have to go back and do that unfortunately but once again let's talk about what sunshine does for southeast alaska gardeners you know for the last three um for the last three years, you know, I kind of got a little, um, discouraged. Absolutely. That was the word. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Well, guess what? I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just really needed some sunshine. And this year we had two months pretty much straight of sunshine. So I am able to harvest, um, my cauliflower. I'm able to harvest my um, green cabbage I'm able to harvest let's just turn around and look at this I am able to harvest last year I did not get one zucchini this year I am back to Ooh. look at that look nice. at that yes we have a couple of these I think there's another one ginormous one. Well, there's one there's a huge one right here look at this thing yeah let me let me cut that off and show you look at these look at this so once again it wasn't me doing anything wrong I just needed some sunshine listen sometimes all you need is a little sunlight <laughs> in your life ready to go just cannot beat them those are gonna go for the chickens the chickens eggs have just been beautiful lately. I've been tossing everything to them. 
but I have probably, I've already harvested maybe about seven or eight of these. And probably today I'm gonna harvest probably around six, seven more already. Uh, let's go over to the cabbage and take a look at that. Look at all these heads. We got one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven ready to be harvested, if you can believe that. The so, green cabbage is out of control. Yeah, What's absolutely. What's wrong with these guys? The red cabbage is just taking a little longer. It's the same where I'm gonna show you our yellow squash. I'm, I think there's only one ready to harvest. Green squash just galore. Yellow squash, a little bit of a slow grower. So I don't know. Um, come on, Raven. She's smelling the flowers. Actually, she's trying to eat my flowers. <laughs> And she tried to eat the cabbage. But same scenario. So last year, it took me all the way until the end of September to be able to harvest um, cabbage last year. And right before I was going to um, pick it, unfortunately, a deer jumped over our uh, electric fence last year and ate the only cabbage that I had that grew last year. So, there we go. Let me get the good cut. There, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is. I know. It's amazing. So, I'll. All this will go to the chickens. But luckily, we have a lot of folks. Brian's mom is coming to visit us for a week. Ron from Alone Off Grid's coming and spending some time with us at the end of the month. So uh, yeah, we should be eating good by then. And it's fishing time. And I just talked to my mom today and I said, listen, <laughs> She's, she lives in Texas, and I said, listen, you're going to have to bring some warm clothes because you're coming in the in the heat of fishing season. So when she gets here in, I think, five days, we're going to be heading out fishing. So she's going to be, uh, we told her she's going to be driving the boat this, while babe. me and her are catching, me and my wife's catching the, uh, catching the salmon. No, Raven, get down. Look at this beautiful green cabbage right here. You just cannot beat that. So beautiful. And let me show you, I did, I think I have one yellow squash that's ready to harvest. Look at my puppy. What you got on you? Slobber. A little bit of slobber. She's, she likes cabbage. She likes uh, cauliflower. She likes it all, so <laughs> she'll snack on it too. Hey, Raven, stop eating that wood. So I needed a little color in my life this year, so I put a a snapdragon, a miniature snapdragon in the garden this year. And if you turn around, there's another one. And I think I have a nice yellow one down there. So I just need a little bit of color. And since it was so beautiful this summer, look at those buds. This is our first yellow squash. Oh, nice. Actually, this is the first yellow squash I have grown out here, period. Usually, my yellow squash weren't growing, and there you go. So, I'm giving this one to my dad. He loves yellow squash, and he gets <laughs> the first one. Um, another thing I'm going to try to do is, um, half of my broccoli has already, I think, um, produced what it was going to produce. And um, Janet Olmsted came over with her friend from Arizona, gardener from Arizona. And she gave me the idea. She said, you know, cut these down and um, see if you can get like second growth on them. So I'm going through right now and I'm giving these a good cut where there's still some leaves, but so I don't know, I've never done this before. So I'm hoping that is the case. And who knows, maybe I can get like a second growth from these. Is that how low you're supposed to cut them? Well, she said not too low. 
not too high so I don't know I'm kind of just you know I'm kind of giving it so you so there's some leaves here there's still some leaves that are growing yeah so we'll see we'll I see. mean um, these these haven't the ones in front haven't produced yet these are from seed and these I planted from Glacier Gardens so um, we should be getting um, later in the season more broccoli nice yeah I mean it's just it's amazing just what what are we June no we're July oh yeah sorry 7th I think July 7th it's amazing what what the we night today's July 9th is that right T tomorrow the video comes out <laughs> but um yeah I mean I could not have been happier this year with what we have produced I'm waiting for the tomatoes. We have a whole bunch of tomatoes. They're all really green. And um, I popped one off just because I got was excited and it was a little bitter. So <laughs> maybe in the next couple weeks we'll have this abundance of, of tomatoes that I can show you. I'm really excited about that. Tomatoes right off the vine. You just, I, they never get in the house because I just spend all day eating them. So I think was just gonna show you my little green tomatoes. As you can see right here, we have some there and we have our first look at this our first big tomato if you just really big look at this and down I see it look at all those so with this colder weather is that going to stunt the tomatoes growth well it will probably slow the growth down big time and that's where I'm hoping babe that next year he will be able to build us a permanent um since you have that sawmill right yeah. he could build a permanent greenhouse and then you know of course what we're gonna put up on the outside will be able to retain heat and what happens is is when the temperature drops it really does drop in here because it's not a permanent structure it just does not hold the heat so everything that um, I mean I'm glad that we had too much of sunshine to really get things going but um, it's gonna slow things down big time. And especially what I'm worried about is, I don't know if you guys remember at the beginning of the season um, from Glacier Gardens, I had bought some cucumber um, starts and I planted eight of them. And within two weeks, they were just dead. And I was really sad about it. And I reached out to um, to the viewers and I said, what did I do wrong? And everyone just said, it's not that you did anything wrong. It's that cucumbers don't transplant very well. They're very sensitive. So um, about two years ago, I had a viewer send me some cucumber seeds and I had been hanging on them, hanging on to them because I wanted to plant these, their lemon cucumbers. And um, I think on the outside it says like they're, they, they're round and they um, taste like apples, I guess. And I was hanging on to those because I wanted to get those into the permanent greenhouse. But I kind of got desperate and those were the only cucumber seeds I had. So if you turn around, I actually planted what, oh, what cucumber seeds that I had. And because it was so hot the last two months, this is what grew which is absolutely amazing so I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of the season because we're going to be cold and I think I looked online and it said cucumbers kind of like good 80 degrees I think oh, that's, that's gone what the 80 degrees is gone. I know I know because yeah. I, this was with the sun this was getting to be about, about 80 90 degrees in here so, but without it, I think we're right now, we are 60 degrees in here. So I don't know what's going to happen. And I feel like I, I feel like I did wrong and wasted those lemon seeds. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope they produce something. If anybody can come across some lemon seeds, if you want to mail some in an envelope, I'll take them. I don't know where to find them. Um, I, I did find some online and I think they wanted like $17 for shipping. It was outrageous. But, um, cause I really wanted to put those in the greenhouse and just get these amazing lemon cucumbers. So hopefully 
they will produce one. I'll take one and I'll be, I'll be happy. Um, but I'm just happy that they grew. You know, somebody said, just put seeds in the ground and it'll grow. And it did. So I'm really happy. And this year is my second year for lavender. And because it's my second year, we actually have the beautiful purple blossoms. And it smells phenomenal. I can't believe, number one, that I grew lavender last year that it lasted the winter i was able to this died so i'm trying to bring some back in this area but um i'm just happy that this last you know wintered over without dying so i'm hoping to do that again this winter because then we'll have even more of these purple blooms next year and it just smells so good i'm gonna cut them and you know, put them in, dry them and put them in little bags. And I just love to sleep with lavender. So I'm really happy that that continued to live and, and produce some purple little lavender flowers for me this year. So I'm really happy about that. So anyways, we just wanted to give you guys a little tour of what, we're, what we've been harvesting lately. And um, just thank you for all your support. I mean, that last Wednesday of Wednesday, I'm still answering comments because I had emails and private messages and just a lot of comments. So I'm getting to the comments. It just, it's just taking me a little longer than normal. Yeah, um, I think it really, um, just reading what everybody wrote really helped me with the decision I think we made. And, and you know, just to think that I would have had to give up everything that we've accomplished here. I would have been really sad so so thanks for reaching out for us and reassuring us that yeah. we did the right thing and it's we're going to be doing more wood stove wednesdays on our so if you've made it this far into the video we're going to do more wood stove wednesdays and load them on the channel members and patreon page and the reason why we kind of stopped doing wood stove wednesdays isn't it's because my fault. <laughs> no well the other reason is because we just lose subscribers and those guys may be, I mean, you could just say, well, those guys were going to leave anyways. That could be, but uh, this is uh, the Woodstone Wednesday, something we can give the guys who uh, monetarily support our channel. And so I think um, if there are good Woodstone Wednesdays that I think that everybody would enjoy, we'll we're going to, we'll put it out for the, for, for everyone, but we're going to try to do at least two Woodstone Wednesdays a month. That's our goal. And that way um, it'll help. Um, help give us something to pay back to the people who are monetarily supporting our channel so anyways thank you guys as always and remember live free